Okay, today you can hear it's raining and we're forced to be in the shed. And you'll probably notice they haven't got the earth fixed to the axle. Right, so we're going to do a little bit of bracket welding on an axle today and uh, basically give you the heads up how easy it is to weld a bracket to an axle. Okay, so we'll kick off by showing you a couple of welders. On the left is a 100 amp flux core welder and on the right is a 210 amp manual metal arc welder. Right, so the flux core welder basically is, um, well, it's a flux core welder. You pull the trigger, out comes the wire, and you can weld with it. In the center, it has a flux, and basically, this doesn't need any gas with it. So it's a gasless MIG. I've converted this to a 15 kilogram reel, which meant moving the center post over one side so I could get more wire and not have to change the reel so often. Works for small panels. So as I said, this is a gasless MIG and the wire inside has a flux to get rid of the crap out of the metal. This example here is a gassed MIG, that's professionally MIGged, and this is manual metal arc where you have to chip off the slag. Okay, so basically this is not suitable for any heavy duty welding because on here you have a thermal cutout which cuts out very, very quickly. Let me introduce you to this manual metal arc one which is single phase or three phase. It can be changed to three phase. We have um, our controls and also it is at the moment on single phase. Right, this is a very serious do-it-yourself piece of kit for heavier metal. Right, so I'll turn it on and you can hear that it actually has a fan in it. Turning this I can increase the amperage or lower the amperage. Now with rods I'll be using 6013s and these are 2.5 millimeters thick. Generally with manual metal arc you'll want a handle that can clamp the rod. This one is an addition or a professional welding handle. So this equipment actually doesn't cut out, it doesn't have a thermal cutout on it which is great for continuous welding. Now manual metal arc you have a slag which if you have a good weld the slag should literally just drop off. But generally you need a little bit more skill or more practice with manual metal arc to be able to strike an arc and weld correctly. Now this takes practice. The upside here is that your rods, when you're welding, you can weld through, as long as you can strike an arc, you can weld through rust and grot. And basically the slag that's left over is the impurities that have been pulled out by the flux. Downside is it takes longer and it only welds thicker metals. Right, so you always need a good earth, a good earth clamp that is going to clamp well onto your work. When you're welding, never look into a naked weld. You always use a welding helmet with a suitable glass. Now, this is a speed glass. It's adjustable to how you prefer it, and it's also charged up with the welding spark here. This one's a standard glass. They come in different grades, depending on what you like, and you also need a plastic cover to protect the glass. This is a fairly cheap and cheerful helmet, and lasts for years if you look after it. Welding gives off radiation and ultraviolet will attack your skin, so the idea of covering as much of your skin as possible is vital. I'll also make you aware of fume poisoning. You can see the smoke coming off the weld. This basically, if you're subject to it for long periods of time, it can make you sick. So take breaks often when you're using manual metal arc welding. I don't need to tell you about grinding. You already know it throws off hot sparks. So make sure you get suitable eye protection. Now the lens or the glass itself will be a safety standard for impacts. Now this has been hit a couple of times, you probably see the melts in it and it's also sealed so it doesn't get behind the glass. Okay, back to the subject in hand, which is axle brackets. We will be welding on a front axle um, spring mount. Okay, we'll get the right one first. Available from Paddock on the axle repair section of their website. There's a few different ones available at a certain cost. And there also is axle brackets available from YRM Metal Solutions. 
Okay, so you can see the condition of this um, rear axle bracket. It's corroded, needs replacing, and also on our project one we have sit on the drive, front axle radius arm bracket is also rotten. They do rot, however a replacement is a lot thicker and easy to weld on. This case here, the front axle brackets, why I've chosen them, is because they are handed. You have left and right, so you'll be able to see by this how exactly it works out. You need to be able to cut the welds off, which will be where I'm marking here. There's one, two, three welds here, and then on the other side, have to cut the bracket up along here. Basically, I'll show you that cutting the welds is easy. You cut it downwards and then across. That's taking the weld out at an angle across here. Okay, 45 degrees, something like that. And then the same here, cut the weld completely off. And then the last one just straight across here and cut through the weld and then knock it off with a chisel. It should come off easy enough if you've cut the weld. This is leaving the rest of the metal in place. It doesn't matter if you damage it a little bit because you're welding it back in that area anyway. The angle grinder disc is about one mil thick to cut the welds. And you'll find the bracket is exactly the same size, so it's a matter of marking out where this part will sit and then clean up the area which has the grotty bit of weld. Now, use gloves with your grinder, use your goggles, and then clean up what's left of the rays of where the weld is that you've cut off. Okay, so after you've positioned it, you can tack it into place, make sure it's correct first, before you go ahead and weld. It's always advisable to get a very clean earth, and I prefer to have the earth as close as possible to the weld. Okay, with regards to amperage of welding, the 2.5 millimeter rod you can weld from 60 to 110 amps. Very much depends on what is your preference, but what you're looking for here is a metal penetration, which means it's actually fusing itself to the parent metals. Success in welding is actually that penetration at getting a nice tidy weld. I'm still learning as you can see, however I can get penetration making sure the metal sticks together. Right, so with the welds here, I've done three of them so far, but basically on this I'll show you how I've stitched this together. There's a weld here, there's a weld here, okay, there's a weld here and another one here and another one here. It isn't a continuous weld. This is to stop the bracket bending and distorting with the heat of the weld while it's being welded. Along the back here has also been welded. Okay, so if you're not confident with welding, then research your equipment first, borrow a welder and do some welding, try it out. It takes practice to weld. If you do it, you will get better at it until you know that you can do it almost in your sleep. Just make sure you look after yourself and look after the people around you while you are welding.